my first mission right after, uh, it must have been around August or September of 44. And my first mission, you go up with an experienced pilot and, the first, and we went to Hanover, Germany, which is about 200 miles or 100 miles west of Berlin. And I can tell you that was my worst experience. And that was your first mission? That was my first mission. Were you, were you a co-pilot or pilot of that? I was, well, I was a pilot, but I wasn't flying the plane over the target. And in fact, I flew very little because the experienced pilot didn't know if, if I could fly or not. So he flew the plane most of the time. But when, the, when we were the target, um, he was flying and I was just sitting there. And it was a calm, it was on a Sunday. I remember that because it was a calm day, sun was out just as clear as a bell. And all of a sudden over the target, everything broke loose. Ack, ack, uh, black, what we called it, guns exploding all over you. That, and the, it seemed like the first, second or third sh shot I heard, the plane next to me got a direct hit and it blew up. Completely disintegrated? It just went to pieces. And uh, man, you talk about being scared. When I think of those days, when I think of that time, yeah. Uh, anyway, I said to myself, what did I get into? And right after we dropped the bombs, and that plane was just jumping all over the place. Because uh, those shells, when they explode, the concussion just, just moves your plane, just shakes it. And after the target, then we got hit by, Earth, by the fighters, the German fighters. Uh, and the gun is back there, and the tail said, look, look at that. Four, four bombers are just going down. The, uh, the fighters came uh, four or five abreast and shot them down. Now, just talking about having regrets. At that time, I thought I regret about having to fly 34 more, 34 more missions before my tour was complete. We got back. The next day, then uh, I, had, we had to go, I had to go by myself, and no experienced pilot. So here I'm thinking about the day before, and here we go to a place. I don't know if they did that intentionally or not, but I saw very few flak, very little bit of flak, and the one here of fighters here and there. So. In other words, when you're the 35, those that were, weren't heavy, we called them milk runs. When you saw a little flak and you saw a few fighters. But the main ones were the big cities like Berlin, but, uh, the Rhine River, Cologne, Koblenz, Dusseldorf. Those were heavily fortified. We were bombing factories, oil refineries, marshalling yards. Anything to slow down the war. And uh, as a matter of fact, we, uh, I believe it's the Air Force that uh, brought the war to a conclusion uh, uh, soon. I mean, faster than if there had been no Air Force because the ground, they, they went a little at a time. And we destroyed at the first, first part of the war, Germans, the fighters were up big group, and they were experienced. Uh, at the end of the war, the, 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 most of the youngsters were up there. And uh, evidently they weren't as sharp. You get back from a mission, and you look for your name up there, you're flying the next day. This particular time, I didn't see my name up there. So I went to the officer's uh, bar there. Then. I never had a drink. When I was at the base there, but that, I don't know what possessed me to go to the bar. And I was there until midnight. Then I did, then I went back to my room. My room was where they played cards. They all, everybody would come in and play cards, gamble. 
And I got in there about 12 midnight and they yelled at me, hey Reese, call operations. They've been paging you all night. And I went in the hall there where the phone is and I, I called them. They told me, forget it, we got Benko next, pilot next across the hall to go in my place to go with a new crew. I had flown about 20 some odd missions by that time. And what's sad, uh, this fellow was a very religious, very religious fellow. He was in church all the time. And I wasn't too religious. That morning, about 600 o'clock in the morning, that damn, the, the bed shook, the whole place shook. I thought it was a V2 that hit, because uh, we experienced that during the time we were there. A V2 was a, a, a bomb that you couldn't see until it hit. It came from Germany. Uh, about 9.30 or 10 o'clock, his crew, his navigator bombardier, co-pilot walked into the room and said, guess what? That was Benko that cracked up this morning. Taking off. That's, uh, I'll never understand that. They and crashed, I, crashed at the end of the runway? Taking off at yeah, the end of the off. runway, yeah. Now we don't know why. We don't want, because in those days, uh, things like that happen all the time, so you went, um, you didn't investigate like you do today. So it's just tough. What about flying with Jimmy Stewart? When I first got there, I went into the, the office or the building there where, where we held our briefings. And I remember I passed, there was a tall guy at the doorway there. And I didn't know that I went by, by him. Then I said to myself, wait a minute. I know that fellow. So I turned around and went up in front of him, looked at him. Remember, Stuart was about 6'3", tall, thin fellow. And he looked down on me and he said, hi. And I said, hi. And that was the start of a long relation there, there while we were there. And I remember talking to a group here not long ago, because I belonged to the Freedom Committee and we talked to high schools, we talked to medium to middle schools, and I'm also on the honor flight and I go with the chairman to the to places to let people know what veterans felt, feel like when they go to Washington, D.C. Anyway, I, the last time I was, um, I saw Stewart was in 84 in Palm Springs. And I'll talk to him. I'm telling this story to a group here much later. And this gal pops up and says, did he remember you? My answer to her was, being the only Hispanic pilot in the group, yes, he remembered me, which is true. And did he fly on, he flew within your squadron? He what? Did he fly within your, your squadron? Or he your was group? in my squadron, in my group. There was a group, each group had four squadrons. So he was in my group. And he was, a, he was a lead pilot. He was, a, I remember I went on two missions with him. Not in the same place, plane, but I was flying right off his wing. And one of them was to Berlin. And the gun is down there. We were the first squadron over the target. So they start, here comes the shells. They were heavy and they were just teasing his plane. I thought, sure, he was gonna get hit. And, and I was right next to him, I got a bundle full too. But uh, we survived, came back. <laughs> we talked about it after debriefing, we talked about that. Now, when did you earn your Distinguished Flying Cross? 
Oh, okay, that was a mission. Now, I can't remember where we went. Yeah, uh, Munich. I believe it was Munich. Heavy fortified. I lost one engine over the target, and I hadn't, didn't realize that they had um, got damage on the wings, on the, on the uh, flaps on the wings. You use the flaps when you're taking off or landing to slow your plane down. And they, I didn't know at the time that they were damaged. So I had to leave formation and go back to England alone because I couldn't keep up with that formation with three engines. So luckily there were clouds. So I tried to stay in the clouds so they couldn't spot me because if you were alone out there, they'd pick on you right now. And uh, on the way back, I lost altitude and I lost my other engine. So uh, luckily there were the engine Engines on, on each side of the plane, one on the left, one on the right. Because if they're both on one side, you, you bail out. So um, I nursed that plane over uh, back to England. And unfortunately, going back, there's a little town in France, Dunkirk, where they had, where they lost, or the English lost a big group of trying to get into invasion there before time. And they, there was a pocket full of Germans. They stayed there. And the, we by, the American just bypassed that, that town, that city. I went over it and all of a sudden I'm getting shell, I'm getting just flack. I didn't know it was a German pocket. And nobody had told us in, in briefing that stay away from that town. So I got flack and we gave them the colors of the day to let them know we're friends. They kept shooting. And I said, enough, enough's enough. So I just peeled off and I, I, I started making a bunch of maneuvers so I wouldn't get hit. And I made it back to England. We got back. I must have been going about, must have been about 300, 200 feet off the ground. I told my boys the first uh, runway, you see anywhere I can land, let me know. Luckily there was an air base, uh, English base, right on the three o'clock, which is on the right side. So my gunner says three o'clock at the base. So I swung around and landed it. When I'm coming down, I couldn't use flaps. So I used every bit of that runway and went off at the end. Luckily, it was still level and not edge of a cliff or something. So we, uh, I stopped it. And I mean, I, I, my brakes were not working proper either. But I was able to, well, both of us put our feet on those rudders and on the brakes and eventually stopped. But I remember I was the last one to get off that plane. And I think I, I get a little emotional when I talk about that because I got the biggest hugs. <laughs>